Storybook Brawl was nice enough to send me some dust codes, so I'm doing another giveaway. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can enter to win. What is up, everybody? I'm No Lux Given, and today, my dear viewers, we are going to be taking a look at a really sweet Fates game where we become fated to Poliwoggle. And what makes this game even more powerful is we also have a Mad Mim in the opening shop, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock onto that, and that is going to allow us to become fated to a tier three unit. Unfortunately, we lose the 50-50 on our first combat. We don't get the slay there, but we've got the Mad Mim. It's still going to wind up being a 50-50, but it just means that we are more likely to slay if we just get that first attack. Whereas like, if we're, it wasn't really a 50-50 that we slayed on our first combat, it wound up being a 50-50, uh, only because we played up against a black cat. But if we were playing up against like a goat, for instance, then we would need a little bit more attack on our polywoggle, and that's going to allow us to slay on turn two, which is great. Now we are going to be able to uh, have a stag, and then we get to pick up another stag here, and I'm also gonna go ahead and just pick up that polywoggle. I figured why not, uh, and then we'll cast this free roll spell, but I figured if we are playing these stags, that is really strong, and it could be good to work on polywoggle next turn. Not this turn, I'm gonna try to have it not slay this turn, and I don't think that's too big of a risk. I think that the stat just from stag pumping up stag should be enough even up against Peter Pants. And next turn, I'll be able to give this polywoggle plus three, plus three, or plus six, plus six, and then we can start to get some slay in action. But what happens here is even crazier because our 3.0 shop just has two bonus stags in it which opens up a lot more interesting lines for us here. I could just pick up a Stag and a Sherwood Shore Shot or a Baby Root. That's totally fine. However, I decided to just pick up both of the two cost units and the spell letting one of my gold go wasted this turn. And the math for that is still gonna work out fine. We're gonna be able to have six gold next turn, pick up two Stags. One additional Stag will roll into the shop next turn. And then the following turn, we'll pick up the next two stags using our gold on uh, 3.2. And that gives us two looks at tier three treasures, as well as two upgraded stags to start off this game pretty strongly and in uh, a pretty nice way here. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to slay with the Poliwoggle, uh, so that part's a little bit regrettable, but we will start by picking up stags. And when we already know we're going to be making a tier three treasure next turn as well it's kind of a no-brainer to take hat at that point try to find crystal ball next turn and we'll see what we can do uh but yeah definitely want to try to make that work and uh see if we can pursue that other route we're going to try to slay with the polywoggle we are going to try to get that crystal ball action going and uh just see what what different avenues we can pursue with that we are going to get the polywoggle slay that's going to turn into a feasting dragon pretty decent unit in its own right then i'll go ahead and pick up the stags and we don't get crystal ball and i'm thinking fancy pants isn't terrible however bad moon's actually fine here too just with the feasting dragon um we're not going to go super heavy into slay i don't believe though i am going to try it out potentially too um this XP seems too good to not pick up, so I'm gonna wind up locking onto this XP as well. But, uh, and, and there's uh, definitely some interesting ways to configure this board that is a little bit tricky, uh, to the point where I think I only want to use half of my Baby Brute. Uh, a little bit weird, but it's just so good to get the buffs on the Shore Shot and the Dragon. That this might be actually just the best way to configure this board. Um, I am still going to look for like River Wish Mermaid Lightning Dragon on our next turn, uh, but I'm not just I'm just not going to like stress about it uh, super heavily. The important thing here is that if you have a Feasting Dragon and you're finding a way to grow it, either with River Wish Mermaid or with the uh, Bad Moon, that is just a good way early to continue to grab Feasting Dragon Slays throughout the game. So that can definitely be good. Uh, now we are just considering what we might want to pick up with this Feasting Dragon turn, but 
I'm just rolling for River Wish Mermaid here effectively uh, because that would be a huge buff. That way instead when Feasting Dragon Slays, instead of it just getting plus one, plus two, it'll get an additional plus one, plus one, and then another additional plus one, plus two from slaying again. So plus three, plus five. Uh, every time it is able to slay. So it was definitely worth looking for. I wound up finding a Nutcracker, which I think is actually pretty reasonable here too. We can go back to the way we had the board configured last turn and make use of the second half of Baby Root and Feasting Dragons just growing uh, regardless here. My opponent fires off an Earthquake, so that's going to give us a little bit of Nutcracker progress and then Feasting Dragons going to get in there and slay and uh, make our board continually bigger. So I think we're doing very, very well this game. And from here, I think this is a good shop too. Like there, there's so many different options that we have at our disposal. Our whole shop has plus three, plus three right now. And we've got cheap spells and we have these stags that are kind of carrying us. We could roll for some XP, though I don't mind taking Fairy Godmother and Friendly Spirit here and just making our board a little bit stronger. And then of course we'll pick up the Lightning Bolt to complement with all of that. I think that this is totally fine. There's definitely a lot of ways that this game could have been played. I think it's like a very interesting game. And at the same time, it isn't a very interesting game. Like. We just got very powerful very early. I think that Stag is potentially even one of the best tier three units to be faded onto, maybe other than something like Brave Princess or something like that. Uh, but barring any like really crazy shenanigans, uh, Stag is just so much power on tier three and it definitely allows us to be really powerful. We are going to lose a combat here. But then we get a tier four treasure from it. So it's, <laughs> you know, win some, you, you lose some, you win some, I guess I'll say. Um, so I'll definitely take it. Um, and speaking of taking it, we can steal one of our opponent's treasures here, I think, pick up some XP as well. And one of the reasons that I kind of do like the Krampus' sleigh there, I felt like the Sphinx is somewhat likely to have crystal ball uh it definitely could be a possibility and then i'm gonna wind up picking up a robin wood to round out the turn i might sell my sure shot to pick up baby root but i am also thinking of locking on to the end in case i don't win this combat that way i'll be able to the end something next turn only cost one gold and then I'll be on 6.0 and I'll have the Krampus Slay Gold as well. So that would work out really nicely. And it does look like we are actually just going to get the win. Unfortunately, we did not give my opponent enough time to crack open their locked chest and look for Crystal Ball. If we steal locked chest, it is going to have the timer reset to three, which is unfortunate. But I think that it is still worth going for here. So pick up my opponent's lock chest. I don't have to purchase any XP because I'm already six. So now we are just rolling for some potentially fun stuff. We're level six now. We've just got a bunch of really powerful units on our board and we've got to figure out how to round this out and get into a nice little strong game here. And Hercules is a great unit, a great pickup when you are up in XP like this. And then from here, yeah, I mean, I guess that uh, True Love's Kiss isn't horrible on this upgraded unit and then Baby Root just to round out the gold for the turn. Bounty Board is a really strong treasure, but I don't think it does enough for us here that I want to pick it up. So just wind up skipping and doing some more rolling. And then I use the Baby Root to support a Friendly Spirit. Robin Wood is going to be pumping up the other Friendly Spirit. So that's really nice and does mean that we have a decent amount of stats, though we wind up losing another combat here. These are really, really close ones. And unfortunately, there's the Crystal Ball. I would have loved to have stolen the Crystal Ball from the Peter Pants, but wasn't so lucky. We'll wind up uh, doing a little bit of a drink me potion here after picking up a good boy, but I do think with such an early level six, uh, you do have to remember we're two XP up on the rest of the lobby at the moment still. Uh, picking up some good boys is definitely good. And then what I do is I cut my friendly spirit that has not received the buff. Uh, the other friendly spirit was... Um, 
uh, purchased later on after an additional Feasting Dragon Slay. So my second Friendly Spirit's a little bit bigger, which is good because now it means Robin Wood will get buffed onto Good Boy. And with all of these buffs flying around, I feel pretty good about completing the Hercules treasure soon. We also do have the chance to open up this lock chest into something interesting. Could be treasure map, could be crystal ball. Either of those things are still very interesting, even at this late later stage of the game. Uh, we can see a bunch of crystal balls. Everybody in the lobby, except for the Sphinx that we stole from, is ballin' indeed. But we are going to be grabbing our tier 6 treasure here, and... With that, I think that the choice here is probably just Phoenix Feather. Spear of Achilles can be good, and Singing Sword also can be good, both on good boy strategies. However, I think Phoenix Feather is also good on those strategies, too. And when you are playing a good boy comp like this, and I, I, I don't really have, like, a term coined for this, but... It's just, it's just funny how often you see these Robin Wood good boy comps. That, that's what I'll call it. That's a fair enough name. Where your good boy is your smallest unit for Robin Wood. But after receiving the Robin Wood buff becomes your biggest unit. And that should still be the case here. Yeah, the good boy is going to get plus 7 attack. Go up to 13. So is the other friendly spirit. And then they're both going to be tied with Hercules and can resummon off of the Phoenix Feather. So just a really cool interaction that always winds up happening way more often than I feel like it should. That's going to give us friendly spirits that are, that are double good boy buffed. And now we only have to deal with my opponent's Jormungand and now we don't have to worry about their backline. Another opponent, by the way, with a crystal ball if we had just stolen up against anybody else. But we are going to get our own chance to look for Crystal Ball this turn. First, though, we get to take a unit from Hercu uh, Lancelot, rather, because we completed that for ourselves this turn. And definitely an interesting option. I'm going to go with Hand of Midas. And what's really weird here, kind of a, a visual bug, we can replace the hat. Um, oh, but it... Okay, yeah, yeah, because, like, the extra slot like wasn't there and I wind up just skipping on the uh the treasure there anyways I couldn't remember exactly how that interaction worked but you know what I'll, I'll go ahead and just rewind it back just in case anybody missed it so I click replace here but it doesn't actually replace it just shows up into the extra slot because the lock chest was cracking open at the same time so I'll take it. It worked. Uh, then I wind up True Love's Kissing again, and that turns the five drop that we just had escaping my mind because of that rewind there. But that gives us an Oni King, which actually isn't terrible with all of these friendly spirits that we have running around. And I think that Echo Wood is also a pretty not terrible pickup here, too, to just grab an upgraded Echo Wood when we've got all of this good boy shenanigans running around. Uh, it will mean that the Robin Woods trigger more on the Echo Wood, and the Echo Wood is then just always going to be our Phoenix Feather unit. That's also fine, because Echo Wood is quite large, and getting a Phoenix Feathered Echo Wood is definitely not a waste, especially once those good boy buffs go everywhere. Could take a pair of 9C Terrors to grab the Staff of the Old Toad or Ambrosia now, but I don't think that's going to be the best use of our time. I do think picking up another good boy is good, though. And from here, we have uh, some interesting options because the way that Robin Wood works, excuse me, is Robin Wood will look for lowest attack. I think it just says, strong, or it just says weakest and strongest on it, which are kind of like not real terms that are fully delved into, but it'll go for lowest attack first, but if there's a tie, it will default to the lower leveled unit. So the first Robin Wood will hit the Friendly Spirit, and then the second Robin Wood will hit the Good Boy. So because of that, I wind up cutting a Good Boy in the last second there. Just to save myself some confusion, and my opponent's going to get in with the Medusa and the Dragon. This one is really going to come down to how much my Echo Wood can do here against my opponent's Jormungand. We do have the Phoenix Feather, however, this combat is still going to be a little bit of a stretch. However, ranged Robin Wood, able to bring it home. So, really nice combat there for us. We'll also get, grab the free Tier 6 unit, and... 
I do like Green Knight. I think that that is a good tier six unit to be able to pick up. We could use it to support the good boys. I also like picking up another Echo Wood and trying to fit that in the comp. And then from here, I'd really like to pick up another good boy, friendly spirit or Robin Wood, find a treasure, find a triple, do some nice stuff with that. Definitely a little bit of a complicated board. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here and I wind up playing this for a second. I'm not sure. I, I really don't know what the best comp was in the end game of this game. And then there's also kind of a little something going on with trees and with Green Knight and stuff, uh, which is certainly just a distraction, but I try to make something happen there and unfortunately do not pick up the Ashwood Elm in time. I thought that it would be good enough to be able to just use my gold this turn to pick up Ashwood Elm, potentially picking up Green Knight next turn, and then that gives us different routes. If we find another good boy and more units to go along with that, we can pursue it. Just wound up being a little bit awkward because I wasted all of my gold. So a little bit unfortunate, but I think that we can still figure out something here. Certainly a little bit, a little bit scrappier, made me not really want to, um, you know, it, it's not, it, it winds up not being that impressive of a game in the end game ultimately uh, because of some of this sloppy play. Uh, I like pick up the Ashwood Elm and then don't pick up the Green Knight. Um, and uh, yeah, it ends, ends a little bit awkwardly, but we're, we're also just so powerful from everything that happened in the early game that it doesn't really matter. I wind up locking onto this good boy and we could potentially even go good boy copycat or something next turn. Um, again, all of this is kind of overkill. We are just really strong right now and I'm gonna wind up rolling again instead of picking up the good boy. It's awkward to double a good boy because then I won't really have a comp. Uh, I don't really know. I, I don't know what I'm going for here, but what I'm really just going for is having a large Echo Wood. It's going to come back with a Phoenix Feather and just hoping that that is going to be enough. And it's not quite going to be enough for the start uh, until it comes back with the Phoenix Feather. And then it is, and that is enough to get the win. Surprisingly against a Black Prism, Peter Pants. So they were doing some really big stuff, but we were just slightly bigger there, putting all of this bonus health onto a um, golden upgraded Echo Wood and then resummoning it with Phoenix Feather. That was just enough to get the game done. And, and uh, I do want to say too that the good boys having the pumps from the early Feasting Dragon were also pretty big because a 6-6 six, six good boy is much, much bigger than just that starter 2-2 two, two good boy. Uh, and obviously those stats are just going to get multiplied throughout the combat. So that was it. Pretty short game, uh, pretty straightforward game, but definitely speaks to the power of the Mad Mim plus Poliwoggle on the Fates. I think that a lot of people are really coming around to the Fates being one of the better characters in the game right now. I really enjoy playing it. The Fated ability is so cool and just makes all of the games feel so powerful and yet dynamic at the same time. Uh, that's why you're seeing so much Fates content on the channel. It's also a free hero, so you get to see it one in every eight games. It's very hard for me to not just click on the Fates because it's so cool and sometimes you can even do some really, really cool stuff with the hero as I showed off in this one. That is gonna be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lux given. Peace. For my giveaway this week, leave a comment on any of my videos and include the word monster. New week, new code word. And you'll be entered into a chance to win a 4,000 dust code. The reason that I say to include the word, that way I can differentiate between the people just leaving a comment and those that are actually interested in the dust to make sure that it goes to a person that will appreciate it. And there's no limit to how many times you can enter. You can go back and comment on some of my previous videos. I've been uploading daily storybook roll videos for the past seven or eight months at this point. So I'm sure there is some sweet content that you have yet to see. And yeah, you can enter multiple times. I will do a new code next week. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that if a bunch of people enter, I will give away more codes. So that's just gonna be limited by how many people are entering and how many people are commenting. Let's get this channel to over 1,000. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. I'm no Lex Given.
Peace.